Live from the 607, it is the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour, where we're talking sports locally and nationally. Why don't you join in the conversation with the hashtag ODPH. Here we go. Coming back with another edition of the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour, hashtag ODPH. I am your host, Ken M, and across from me in the brand new studio is the sound guy galore, JR. Oh, you know I'm right here. And to the right of me, checking the phone, getting the stats ready to talk to you about, the one and only Padawan J intern himself. Oh, let's do this. Absolutely. Make sure to hit us up on the social media, hashtag ODPH. we got a lot to talk about, little time to do it, so here we go. NFL this week, a lot of crazy games going on. Pittsburgh, New England probably was the most noteworthy of the week. I lost years off my life because of that game. That is a lie. There was a better game than that. Oh, why don't you break it down for us then, Mr. Oh, Jay. yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that one later, but let's get to the lock, which was Skull Nation reigning the boom on those poor Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, and dare I say, was, was, just, was that the final nail in the Marvin Lewis coffin that he wanted out after that game? Well, well considering he was getting – I mean, I think it was one of those ones where you were fired or you can leave. Well, still, in it, all seriousness, it, I'm it, pretty it came sure out earlier that morning that he was going to – I forget what the exact wording, but like he wasn't going to be back after the season. So that was before the game that that came out. Listen, that, that defense is what it does to coaches. They don't want to face it, so they're like, listen, I'm going to lose my job if we go play those Vikings, so I'd rather not. I'm just going to leave. And save face. Well, the thing with Marvin Lewis, I was talking with somebody this week. You know, he's been the head coach in Cincinnati since 2003. Uh, what's he done for him? Well, that's the big argument because he's made them into contenders. I mean, obviously, before he took over, it was a little kind of murky seasons over there. Yeah. He's made them into contenders, but they always either show up and they do great or they disappear for a season. And with the amount of talent they've had come through there, you would think they'd be more consistently going into a deep run of the playoffs, maybe a Super Bowl appearance here and there. So you th- you'd think they could win a playoff game. Well, I mean, it's arguably their best season was when Carson Palmer got hurt. Yep. And ever since then, it's kind of been... Up and down. Well, we'll see what happens. But it's going to be interesting to see where he lands after this, if he wants to continue coaching, if he wants to do some future endeavors somewhere else in the NFL. It'd be interesting to watch. But Skull Nation did show up. There was no question about that. And they're making a strong statement going into the playoffs. And how you got to be feeling about it facing Philadelphia or whoever's coming down the pike, Jay? It don't matter. Philadelphia, any, insert any meme that you've seen on the internet. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it don't, whatever. It don't matter. It's going to roll through the north. It's going to roll through Minnesota. We'll be there in the Super Bowl. It's going to be epic. And I would have been, if, if Philly is the opponent they end up playing at some point in the playoffs, I would have been in, interested by that game had Wentz not gotten injured. Now it's kind of like, okay, yeah, well, yeah, Minnesota's going to win. Oh, well, yeah, there's no doubt. Well, Folds is, is a reasonable backup. Yeah, he's reasonable. He knows the system. And is, with that amount of talent, you figure they would contend and make a deep run. Not saying they're going to get there, but it's going to be one of those kind of wait-and-see moments. But Folds is definitely going to get him on the right track just to stay contending right through whatever seed they wind up being. Because I think if they officially It'll be at least two. I was going to say it's one Minnesota will be one. Yeah, I said they haven't officially locked in the number one seed yet. Nope. Uh, they've clinched the, the division and a first-round bye. Yeah, okay, so, they, so it's they'll a be one or two. two. But it's going to be two. Yeah, well. It's going to be two. On JR's big uh, there's, playoff there's, board, it's number there's two. There's my early lock. They'll oh, be, they're going to be two and to who, Minnesota. So who was your leap this week? <sighs> you know, my leap, listen, I, I, was, I told the guys before the show that I was going to have to do a lot of editing about this because I picked the Giants, who looked really good, for not enough time, mm-hmm. no. as would be the typical Giants. So my only comment to that is, you know what? That organization deserves what they got coming to them, which is going to be a lot of years of misery because that was pitiful. That was embarrassing. You had them by the throat, and then you completely let them off the hook. That was oh, that game was, green here. It was ridiculous. You let them off the hook. That game was so damn bad. Oh, it was I mean, astounding. Us, mm. It was astounding in the worst way possible because I was working, and of course, you know, being in the in the New York area. The Giants game was on in the break room. So I sit down. I'm like, oh, okay, Giants. I'm like, oh, hey, wow, they're actually winning against Philadelphia. In the half hour I was on uh, lunch, they gave up the lead in like the span of five minutes. Insert LeBron James, not one, not two, three kicks blocked in that game. Yep. Way to go special teams. That was pretty cool. You're up 21-7. I'm like, yes, this lock is great. Minnesota's going to tr- walk right to the one seed because I didn't even care about the Bengals game because we already knew the outcome of that one. That yeah. game, that was re- embarrassing. But I'm like, yes, we got a one-way ticket to the one to the one seed. The Giants are finally doing something good, 
And then they were like, oh, wait, we got to keep pace with Cleveland for the number two pick, so let's just give it back to Philadelphia and make Nick Foles look like a stud. I'm waiting to hear Coach Duffy's <sighs> latest blog concerning the Giants going after this game. I almost texted him, too, because I'm like, Coach, listen, they're ruining your draft pick, but I certainly appreciate the help to get the one seed. But I didn't because I had that weird sneaking feeling that the Giants would just screw it up somehow, and they did. Sure enough. And they did. They let me down. It's, so. not, it's not their year. I mean, obviously, I think they're one of the teams that are – Anxiously anticipating the off season. Yeah, it can't get here soon enough. Yeah, I think it's in their cool. case, it can't. Like, it, I, it, when would, I mean, let's think about this. As, aside from like the Browns, because they haven't had a good year in a while, quite a while, right? Is this is this like one of the most laughable seasons you could have? Yes, for for them in football. I mean, yes. just just thinking back to it, like you have the Lions who went zero and sixteen years ago. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, I mean, th- this is almost laughable what yeah, they're doing as a franchise there, because there was more than one person from more than one outlet that said they look good on paper that they weren't going to necessarily pencil them in in the Super Bowl but they're like hey they're going to make they're going to make a I hit. stand by what I said at the beginning of the season cuz <laughs> I'm not I'm say. not backing down no I I no, I, I, know, I took I took them to go and I'm not saying just you I'm just saying in general there were a lot of people who said you know what this team's good well, you know we'll see where they can go and and everything fell apart I mean you can say injuries played a factor sure yeah but I think when your offensive line can't stop anybody to give your running game a time to develop into something you're not going to win any games. And when your quarterback is running around crazy and doesn't have time to even read routes because he's on his back or going to be tackled, you're not going to win anything. And no. obviously it showed, and they're going to have a lot of work to do this offseason. The thing that made me the most mad, though, was, as, as you said before, I mean, that was your Super Bowl pick, mm-hmm. obviously, but you know, even going to the season, that defense was supposedly ranked in the top 10. Yeah. Yep. It was supposed to be that good. So I'm like, finally, hey, maybe at the end of the season, they're, you know, they're playing for jobs, they're playing for contracts. You know, you get some of these backups in there. They're trying to play for starting positions. Actually looks pretty good, and then they fell apart. And I'm like, that was the only hope that team had was their defense was allegedly good, and you completely just Well, the, def- the defense might be somewhat good if they weren't on the field for 75% of yeah. the total yeah, plays the in the game. When you're burnt out, you can't stop anybody. Like when I, Out of all the plays the Giants team collectively is on, they're on the field for probably over 50% Let's of see. them. Block field goal, missed extra point. Block punt at your own fourteen. That's good. That helps the mm-hmm. defense get them right back on the field. It's like, come on, that was so bad. It is, and like we said, they have a lot of work to do this off season. My yeah. only, my only finishing thought on my leap was it don't matter. Skull Nation, they're going to get the number one. It doesn't matter. Road's still got to go through Minnesota. Super Bowl's got to go through Minnesota, and we'll be there waiting for whoever decides to show up out of the AFC. I'll tell you, you, it's hard to root against Minnesota right now and what they're doing. It's very tough to prick against them. Case Keenum got snubbed for the Pro Bowl, and he should be MVP talk. He, he's, he's looking good, man. In, in some circles, he is. In some, be in, in, in some, I mean, there's a lot of MVP names getting thrown out. We'll have to wait and see how the voting comes out at the end of the season. The yeah. entire Minnesota defense should be in the Pro Bowl and starting, but they only got three of them. Yeah, the, well, it's the Pro Bowl. I mean, none it's a popularity go- contest. None of them are going anyway. Yeah, let's be real. But yeah, besides yeah, the point, that's beside the point. So we're going to my locks, and uh, the Los Angeles Superchargers just decided to let me down. <laughs> Kansas City, I think, heard the podcast, got a little extra fired up. Maybe I gave them some extra bulletin board material. I don't know, but Kansas City decided to go crazy on the Chargers, routing them 30-13. to 13. Ouch. So they're now sitting, I believe, on top of the AFC West. Alex Smith looked like he got back on track. Kareem Hunt ran for 155 and a touchdown. And the Chargers... Showed some promise, and now I think are outside looking in on the playoff race. You've, you've got the three-pick... Philip Rivers in that game, which was miserable and terrible. Yeah, but you know it's it's that division. We've talked about this on the show. KC flip flops each week because mm. their offense didn't really look that great in KC. Ask Travis Kelsey, my starting tight end in my fantasy team, where I got ran over, who did nothing. But that's beside the point. Besides the point. But their defense shows up one week. Their offense can't get it done. The next week, their offense puts up forty. Their defense can't stop anybody. They keep flip flopping back and forth, and this week was the same thing. Philip Rivers, three picks. The offense, they did the ground and pound. They looked game. okay. Yeah, they, they they were okay, but it wasn't a complete KC team like we saw at the beginning. They, they're still like not quite gelling. I mean, they're not back just yet, right? But they did show promise that they were going back in that direction. Right. For the record, uh, LA Chargers not out of it quite yet. Uh, they are listed as the eight seed, but when you have Kansas City, Tennessee, Buffalo, and Baltimore all eight and six. Right, no, no. They're not eliminated, and I apologize if I got confusing on that. No, they're uh, if the playoffs started today, they're outside looking. Right, at, yeah, they are. But it's not completely locked in who's in there just yet. I mean, obviously that number six seed is looking good for Buffalo, 
had you know as the Circle, season ends baby. today. We're going to need a lot of luck this weekend. But I digress. But Kansas City, they look good. And I don't know, maybe this is them making a run. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But my leap came through to my happiness, JR's happiness. Cam Newton and the Panthers took it to Green Bay, 31-24. to Aaron Rodgers came back off IR. There's a lot of talk. But like I said, coming back too soon from an injury, maybe. I don't know. But he had arguably one of his worst games on record. Three interceptions. As I said before, why bring him back? The division was already ours. You're proving absolutely nothing, and you run the risk of getting him hurt, which is exactly why they put him on IR this week, which is a smart move. Yeah. And I told you you shouldn't have bring him back anyway. You just called the season a wash. But, I mean, what if he'd seriously gotten hurt? Oh, if he seriously got hurt, you would they would never hurt the end of it. It was right in the first quarter. He took one – What? no, I think it was like the start of the second quarter when he threw a touchdown and he got driven into the ground on a scramble play on his right shoulder. And everybody in Green Bay just flinched. Yeah, they took a deep breath. Wondering like, if they <gasps> – and you shouldn't have to. No, you shouldn't. That right that right there, the reaction of all those fans should have told you he should never have been in that game in the first place. No, I mean, it was it was a really questionable call to bring him back. I mean, I agree with you. I thought they should have just sat him on the season and just take your chances with you know, what you had. Especially against, of all teams, the hot Carolina Panthers who are just running yeah. over people. Exactly. Skull Nation Car- felt that one. Carolina's getting hot at the right time. Cam Newton is looking like an MVP-type candidate. So, yeah. Hey, shout-out to McCaffrey helping my fantasy team. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I have Cam on my team too, so I mean, I trust me, I was hey. extremely happy about that. But Carolina's getting hot at the right time. Can we just say I love the moment in that game where Cam's like, "Oh, you've been watching film? Watch us." Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Well, I mean, the, the swagger is coming back to Carolina, and they're gonna be a they're gonna be a tough team. Whoever faces them in the playoffs, I gotta say though, I'm I'm pretty impressed considering you know at the beginning of the season we had all these questions about Carolina, Cam off the shoulder surgery, he'd only thrown two passes in the preseason. Now look at him. Well, now he's in midseason form. Oof. I mean, now I think, you know, whatever, if you want to call it, you know, uh, game rust, you know, when you haven't been throwing and, and, and now he's in his flow and now he's in the, you know, where it kind of is more repetition for him. The muscle memory is back. He's ready to go. Well, and like, and like you said, I mean, we're, as we were talking about before, they were saying, the, you know, as, as they saw in, in previous games for Carolina this year, you know, you see him making bad throws. He's missing high. He only had, like I said, he only had two throws in the preseason, or at least two attempts yeah. mm-hmm. that were just little crossing routes. They weren't even showing off his arm. So again, it's it's nice to see that you know he all those question marks going in was like, man, how's that shoulder going to look? The first few games, he was like, man, it really doesn't look that good. But now that team just seems unstoppable. They're just running all over everybody. They're going to be a tough matchup going into the playoffs, no matter who faces them. We're ready, baby. <laughs> That's a really tough trip up north, let me tell you. That will be, but I tell you that that game will be fun to watch. It'll be oh, nice yeah. to see the rematch there. And I think the biggest game of the week was Pittsburgh and New England. Pad, I'm going to let you take this one. I know that you didn't have a lock and leap this week, but you are the Patriots fan here. Break this down to us. Uh, Well, first of all, I have lost years, multiple years off my life because of this game. Uh, Back and forth game, uh, final score of 27-24, but the real drama didn't come until the last minute or so of the game. Patriots went up 27-24 late in the game after a two-point conversion from Rob Gronkowski. Uh, Patriots kick the ball off to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, you know, then uh, throws a pass to, I believe it was Martavius Bennett, or Bryant, excuse me, uh, which should have been like a 5'10", maybe even 15-yard catch. Turns into 70. And I'm standing there watching this going, no, 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 along with some other words. And then they go down, and the very next play is they punch it into their tight end, uh, James Miller, I believe is his name. And touchdown, I'm like, okay, well, they go to review it, and it's taken a while. And even Jim Nance and Tony Romo are like, why is this taking so long? It's pretty clear cut. To which then they realize, oh, the ball rotated like a full 180 degrees. And the ref comes out and says, you know, well, because of the it impacted with the ground and the ball spun, you know, it's, it's no catch, no touchdown. So they then go to attempt another touchdown pass. I think I believe that was the second uh, touchdown attempt was two plays later. Uh, they it got tipped and intercepted. Game over. Wait, so I want to ask you guys: Was that a catch or no? You know, we had a lot of people chiming in on social media, uh, Instagram. I think everybody said no. I know Frederick Theodore said no. It wasn't a catch. I, if I have to make a call, I gotta think it wasn't a catch either. It's close. Oh, it is. I, it's I it's agree with extremely that. close. I tried watching it a few times to see 
And from what I could tell, it did look like the ball shifted. Now, oh, I'll, yeah. albeit it's your interpretation. I mean, right. did he lose full possession? Did you know whatever you want to determine? I guess if you're looking at it and saying, did the ball stay put? Is that a catch? Then no, it's not. It's one of those real messy situations, and I hate seeing a game getting fixed by that. But if I have to say, I gotta say no. Jay, what do you think? Uh, you know, I'm gonna say Tom uh, Steelers head coach today made it came out and was talking about the catch rule, and he's like, it's not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna say it needs to be re- reevaluated, and I agree. Yeah. Because as as far as I'm concerned, with a, a running back does not have to maintain control because once it crosses the plane, it's called dead on the spot i.e. the Panthers game, Mm -hmm. Anthony Barr came out and punched it out of Jonathan Stewart's hand as he reached across the goal line, fumbled, wasn't on the ground, but the play is ruled dead. Yeah, because it wasn't across the plane. Right. So then receiver doesn't have that same rule because he's not a runner. So then to me, it's it's so overcomplicated. And it shouldn't be. Did he catch the damn ball? Yes. Was his knee on the ground? Yes. I, I mean, to me... I honestly don't even know because the rule is so confusing. Yeah. So, we, I mean, you say, I guess, yes, initially he caught it, but by rule because he didn't maintain control going to the ground, it's not a catch. But it crossed the plane while he had it under his control, which means the play should have been dead. It's a mess. They need to reevaluate as far as I'm concerned because it's getting way too complicated. And you figure that what got re- reviewed and fixed when Des Bryant had this happen to him a couple years back, if I'm Calvin not mistaken. Johnson. Yeah. I mean, there has been uh, – examples of this from years past. How come we can't get this right? This is going to be something that I think they just need to say universally if a player, no matter what your position is or how you do it, if you cross the plane, is the plane, the, the ball dead, then you say yes. If it's not, then you need to fully establish it so everybody knows so we don't have this mess. You know what I think they should do? I think just to make it right, just do a rematch. Well, it might happen. <laughs> should be any, I it, mean, it, as far as I'm concerned, you know what? But you know what? Then change the rule, make it a rematch. But then that we, game was so good, as Pat said, it took the years off of life of Steelers oh yeah. fans and Patriots fans. Just but, do a rematch. But, but here's the argument. I pay then. to see that again. Okay, so you do a rematch. Antonio Brown is hurt. He can't play. Oh, he can play. Well, he's going to play in the postseason. Yeah, he didn't out. play in my fantasy team either. That was great. Thank you very much. Anyway, but that's but that's my point though. I mean, you can't really say that. I mean, I honestly, I think these two teams are going to meet up in the playoffs again. Oh, it's going to happen. And I just think that. Going to New England, Pittsburgh is going to have an extremely, extremely tough challenge. I just, I just have to say though, I'm, I'm really impressed by, aside from this game though, how you know it looks like when you watch that game, you just saw, you thought, man, Steelers and Patriots are are one and two, like there's no doubt oh, yeah. in your mind they're one mm-hmm. and two. Oh yeah. But then sneakily, Jacksonville could actually still be the two. They could. They but can. They need a little help. But I mean, they're like. They're but, sneak like in, they're, in case you didn't know they're third. Yeah, no, their defense. And they look good. Their defense is is taken afar. I just think if they have to go face either Pittsburgh or New England, no matter when they face them, I think that's when your quarterback situation is going to come back to haunt you. Yeah, but if they get at home, if they get that, home, could, that could be really sneaky because I mean it's going to be a lot closer than people think. I'm not, I'm not saying that they don't have a shot. I'm just saying if it comes down to Brady versus Borles or Roethlisberger versus Borles. I'm going with Brady or Roethlisberger. At home. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Ironically, uh, I believe the last time that Jacksonville was in the playoffs, uh, back in 2007, they faced the New England Patriots in the playoffs. Yeah, David Garrard, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, that was a close game, too. But no, This is no David Garrard. No, uh, this, this is, is a Blake Bortles. Bortles. Yeah, <laughs> which, I'm, which I'm just saying. If, if you're asking me, okay, who would I go with? I go with a veteran quarterback that has been here before. And between Roethlisberger and Brady, I mean, how many rings do they have? A lot. That's all you need to say. Two, three, yeah, each, five. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a tough challenge no matter what. Hit us up on that social media. Let us know what you think. Was that a catch? Yes, no? Join in the conversation. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're now on iTunes. That's right. The Yosho Duro Parlay Hour is now on iTunes. So download, rate, and subscribe. Spread the word, and thank you for listening to the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. I'm the street light guiding you home. Avoid the wrong step into Coming back for the second segment of this week's ODPH, and we got to talk some NBA 
Dare I say, as a Knicks fan, it was bittersweet this past weekend seeing Melo come back to the Garden. He got a standing ovation. They did a nice video tribute. But the star of that game was Michael Beasley. And the Knicks, without Chris Stapps, beat Oklahoma City. I want some thoughts from the panel on this one. So as a fan of just basketball as a whole, I find it very interesting that, as Pat can distinctly remember, 26 was a laughing matter yep. when we talked about their over-under at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. To, to Ken, and I believe Coach Duffy, I know you're out there. You're probably going, yeah, that's true. I said those words. But they're actually looking good, impressive. Knicks are bringing that energy back to the garden. But I think it's almost, with that win over OKC at home, it was almost like a slap in the face to Melo because maybe he had that moment. I mean, I, I, I doubt it, knowing that he was the Syracuse mm-hmm. standout. That's yeah. right, Syracuse. Go Cuse Nation. Anyway. That he was – the thing that maybe – I mean, he won't think that he's the problem. And he would probably oh, ne- he never will. He will never admit that it is. Nope. But to realize, like, wow, they're actually really good. Yeah. And what changed? I left. Well, they switched from being so ISO to they're actually working everybody on the court. There's kind of like a different energy. I mean, Porzingis is definitely taking over the team as his. You have a but, unicorn. Yes. But but the role players are stepping up. I mean, that's what they needed to happen, and they're they're playing lights out right now. But like I said, when Beasley's dropping 30, and between Westbrook, who did 25, Mello, who did 12, and Paul George, who did 18, I'm telling you, I mean, there's a new swagger in the, in the garden. And I, seeing the Knicks being as successful as they are, I mean, it's crazy. And and for Melo, it's got to be kind of a, a weird thing to go see. Because, I mean, he did mean a lot to the franchise. When he came over, I mean, the expectations went through the roof. And it's nothing against him. It's just that was just a bad time in Knicks basketball. And now it's a rebuilding mode where I guess the bar is not expected to be as high as they're hitting. But they're going to make a deep run in I think if they get in the playoffs, they can make a deep run, and they're actually making New York basketball relevant again. Where you know before it was kind of like a laughing stock with the Knicks, but now I'm I'm telling you, I think I think a, f- a five seed is not out of the question. Have we have we changed our pace or changed our our thought on this? I'm gonna ask. I'm, I, I wish Coach was here because I would ask him too, and I know he'll chime in. Mm-hmm. But I'll ask you as the diehard Knicks fan in the room. Yeah. In the next five years, can this team win a title? Yes. Really. I think so. I think that they need a couple more parts. I mean, oh, I'm, I, I'm not saying like this starting five today no, no, in, no, no, in no. five years win a title, but I'm thinking because the whole point when they got Mello was they got the star, they had Stoudemire, mm-hmm. and the whole point was to try and entice some more big names to come back to the garden and then just establish that dominance and run train, but I, I really don't think he ever got anybody. No, he no. didn't. He didn't get the LeBron. And, and Stoudemire did not do as well as they thought he was going to do. I mean, granted, he did have some injuries. Right. And I think with the Knicks now, though, I think that with Przingis being the superstar and he's having great role players around him, I think he might bring some talent to the to New York. I think that they do have a chance to be a serious contender. Do I think they could win a championship if they get enough people around them? What yeah. Do they, what do they need? I still think they need a, a shooting guard. I still think that that is going to be a glaring weakness. And I... You know, I just I think they just need maybe another uh, forward. Have you, have you and Coach come off of that high? Have, have you guys agreed that Hardaway is earning his money now or no? Um, I have not gotten the chance to talk to the coach about it. Um, I will say this. I'm very happy to see Hardaway playing at the level he is. I know at the beginning of the year it was a little nice, like, where are you, bro? Yeah. What are you doing well, for us, man? I mean, in all honesty, he didn't play at this high level when he was here the last time. And for the amount of money – and granted, I am an old-school – person when it comes to contracts. I don't believe in big money contracts. And I think when somebody gets thrown something, you know, astronomical in my opinion, I do react very crazy. Like trust me, when we start talking baseball contracts, uh it's going to get very wordy on the show. Stan. Yeah, exactly. But it is what it is. It's the it's the way of the world for pro sports that when you get these big money contracts, everybody needs to produce. I am very happy as a Knicks fan to see Hardaway show up and do this. I trust me, I am more than ecstatic about it. And I just hope that this carries through. And then as the team is progressing, let's see where they go in the playoffs. I mean, do I think they're going to win it this year? No. I mean, I'm optimistic. I'm a, as a fan, I'd love to see it, but I don't see it happening. Yeah, as uh, it stands, if the playoffs were to start tonight, New York Knicks are an eight seed, 
and uh, would be facing the number one seed Boston Celtics. <laughs> and anything is possible there. I mean, I know, granted, I'm going to probably get some very angry uh, messages about it, but I'm just saying the Knicks are looking like, you know, actual contenders. Not saying they're going to win it, but they're actually looking like a really fun team to watch, and you can definitely tell the energy in the garden. I have, I have to say, I, f- I find this fascinating. As, as a just a person who watches any game, you know, like last night I watched uh, LeBron and Giannis Antetokounmpo yes. go at it. Because they're tight. Exactly. I'm watching, and it's like, I, I loved how we talked about it before, and even you know, even going back to last year before we had this going on, and you're like, you get the, you, I love the Porzingis draft, and everybody's like, who the hell is this guy? What is Phil doing? And it's just like you think about it for any any sport, and Pat can relate with the Patriots, and you're like, who the hell is that guy? Well, there was and he one, turns into your MVP, and then you're just like, who the hell is? There was a what? shot of that and one just, kid. <laughs> there was a shot of that one kid when Porzingis got drafted that like he was just beside himself, like who, what? And then, like, a, what was it, like a year or so later, Kid was the biggest Porzingis fan. Right? But, I, but I'll break that down, though, because the Knicks have traditionally found a way to go, like, reach in, and they haven't pulled the diamond out. They did this time. I will admit, I was wrong when they drafted Porzingis because I was one of those angry Knicks fans because I'm going, okay, great, we got somebody that we don't know anything about, and you know, we just completely burned a pick. Pad, this is all because... Our host here can't admit that Phil did something good for the team. That was his one good thing he did for the team. <laughs> Before he left, he gave you he left you a unicorn. You chased him out of town. Well, no, he's he's lucky. <laughs> okay, if you think about it, he almost ran Porzingis out of town. Like yeah, that's after true. He, after he did, I like know. like granted, that was the one Phil move. I I will stand by. That was one. One. <laughs> I love it. it was just yeah. One. I will stand by it because hey, at least we gave him his chance to either sink or swim. This one was like a half paddle, but granted. He almost dropped it when he tried getting rid of him. Because if you think about this, and this is a scary thing for Knicks fans, he got rid of Melo. He almost got rid of Porzingis. If he did that, are the Knicks even 26 games like the goal? No, that's the dream. You'd have a lot of picks. Oh, we'd, have, we'd, we'd have more <laughs> picks than we know what to do with. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if, if we didn't have Porzingis, and he almost he almost got rid of him. I mean, let's not forget about it. There was discussion. Yeah, there was. It was great when we talked about this because the fear in you and Duffy, and you're like, you can't take our unicorn. We just we just found out who he was. He's great. White. Don't, don't yeah. take our unicorn. What are you doing? Oh no! When, when we found <laughs> out what, when, when we found us? out what we had, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll admit, like I said, when you got oh, drafted, no, when you got drafted, yeah, I eat my words. I will get on this show every time if I am wrong and say I'm wrong. I wish we could find. I, I hope we can find that video and share it on the page of just like that night when they show the room and they're like, and the New York Knicks take Christoph Porzingis. You see everybody. They're like, what the? F-? Yeah. Who the like even people just looking at like who the hell is this kid? Where where did he come? Who where did you find this kid? But to see how he came into the garden and took over. Oh yeah, that's okay. Then you know what I justify and I say you know what, Phil, congratulations, you, you you got that one right. Not comparing the two, but is it like Ewing esque where he's in the building? He just is like I'm here. This is my dojo. I'm I'm gonna take this team and go places in a certain degree. Not saying they're the it, same. I'm it, not no 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 no. Just, in a certain degree, yes. Yeah. Because now there's a face of the franchise. And there's somebody that is showing that there's hope that this team is going to do something. It's it, Like I say, I, I often refer to him like Dirk Nowitzki in Dallas. You know that that's your guy, the face of the franchise. Now you just got to build around him. And, hey, Dallas won a championship. I'm saying the Knicks can do it too. They need a little more pieces though. As we as we talked about uh, at the, when we did our – to preview the NBA, mm-hmm. I'm just curious. Now that we're getting into the season, we're into the heart of it, where do we still stand on our finals? Pat, what do you think? Uh, I think you can't sleep on the Houston Rockets at this point in time. They're playing lights out from three and everywhere else. I think you need to give Coach D'Antoni another uh, Coach of the Year award because Harden's averaging 10 assists. Mm-hmm. I think it's like nine point whatever. Nine, it rounded up, I think it's 10, but – it's like nine point something. He's just, and remember he couldn't even get nine in like a three game stretch. He had Chris Paul. That's that's the big switch though. Yeah, but they're both averaging. I mean, Chris Paul's up there too as assistant. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, to but think that James Harden was the guy who took like Kobe esque fifty shots a night. You knew he, the ball wouldn't leave his hand like Melo esque, and now somehow he's gotten into the Harden mind and's like. Yeah, but you look. Assist. You look at a game like they had the other night against uh, the Utah Jazz. Now, granted, Utah Jazz not that great a team. Uh, the Rockets won one twenty to ninety nine. But you look at the box score, Harden had 26, uh, Chris Paul had 18, Eric Gordon had 33. Because I was watching the highlights of this, they were guarding Paul and Harden, 
they weren't really focusing all that much on Gordon. They just kept kicking it out to Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon was just draining them like it's practice. Yeah, when your role players are stepping up, or your non-superstars, I guess it would be a better term, guess what? You're going to win a lot more games because everybody's so worried about Harden going crazy and Chris Paul going crazy. Yeah, Houston is definitely getting up there. Yeah, Eric and Gordon in that game, 7 for 12 from 3. It's It, it, it reminds me of, like, a Patriot-esque so to speak, where you got Eric Gordon, the former Pelican, mm-hmm. who kind of fell under the radar, wasn't a good shooter, wasn't getting good looks. Now he comes to the Rocket team. He's a lights out guy. Ryan Anderson, the journeyman, you know, the guy from Orlando. Again, he was pretty good while the White Howard was there, but now he's got a chance. He's getting open shot. Like Pat said, you've got Gordon and Anderson who are getting wide open shots because you've got to deal with Harden and Paul. And then you're like, shoot, you've got two really good. You know, almost yeah. like Steph Curry esque. And they've got a real yeah. interesting schedule coming up. They've got the Lakers. Uh, they're playing the Lakers at home, the Clippers at home, on the road against the Thunder, and on the road against the Celtics. Harden is definitely making his run for being maybe like in a Kobe mode, because as we we saw this past weekend too, Kobe had both his numbers retired. But I think Harden is making his case to be a, a one man show. But now he's going to help around him that he can actually make a deep run. And by the way, how awesome is that to not have just one jersey retired, but two? Oh, it's rarefied air. And just look and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm that good. But you know what? He was the franchise face for many years. Yes. And he delivered on winning. Now, granted, he had help with Shaq the first oh, half. Oh, yeah. But overall, you can't knock anything Kobe did. Yeah, there was a good 15-plus years that when you would think of Kobe Bryant, you thought L.A. Lakers. And one of the scariest guys in the final minutes if the game was on the line. He always had that look. He if he if The camera was on Kobe, and he just, there was just that look he had, you know, snarling, glaring, whatever, you know, whatever it was. Uh-oh. Look out. Now, real now real quick, only because it, when, when they retired his numbers, Magic Johnson introduced him as the greatest Laker ever. Agree. Or no? Uh, it's debatable. It, yeah, it's definitely debatable. I think generationally, yes, yeah, you'd have it's yes. different. It's different, yeah. Because for, if you ask anybody under twenty, maybe twenty five, you'd say Kobe. Because yeah. what do you do at the gym when you may take a shot? Yeah, Kobe, the, yeah. yeah, that's that's not even a twenty five hundred thing. That's that's a thing for even kids. You know, I've heard four year olds do that. That like you take a shit, you know, you shoot a, a piece of paper at a garbage can. Kobe, Kobe. I will say for when he came in, he definitely made the team his. He definitely established his presence. Yeah, you'd have to argue for that for that generational time, absolutely. Because and you know what, he won. So so who would be your top three Lakers of all time? Is he is he number one? If I have to choose, yeah, I'd say him. I'd say he's one. Magic's two, three. Kareem. West? No. I, you know, I was just thinking the face of West. The, I mean, he's four. I mean, he is the logo. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. I mean, the Lakers have always had, always had so much talent. You can you can you can argue. Going down the line because yeah. you guys saw Shaq's up there, for sure. I, I only I only I only joked only because of me being a big, the big guy on the show. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm always a big guy fan. I love the post work. I Kareem. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. but but again, that's like that, they're not even playing the same position. So I mean, that's it, it's not the same position, and the game has changed. Yeah, and it's definitely not the same if you compare eras. I think we talked about this on the show. Remember when you were talking about when NBA uh, 2K18 came out, and now you can get the the like I don't know how the Lakers old like. All Star team isn't by far like the greatest ever. Yeah, could you imagine that starting five? That's insane. That starting Disgusting. five in their prime against Golden State's current run. Ooh, uh, that's some I'll fun take a basketball. best of seven series. Please. Yeah, that's a fun basketball series. I don't know. I don't think it would even be four. I don't think it'd even be five. No, because the game was more physical then. I mean, now it's it's just a different thing. This, yeah, because because if, if you take Shaq in his prime and put him up against the current. Golden State Warriors, you know Shaq's not afraid to bump and knock a guy over. I was going to say, could you think of Kareem on one side, Shaq on the other, Kobe on the other side with Fisher and then Jerry West or Magic Johnson or having West come off the bench? Can you imagine, imagine, uh, what is it, Danny Green trying to any one of his moves against Shaq? And Shaq goes, please. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just – it's something that is always debatable. I mean, that's a good thing. But, I mean, when you have a great franchise like the Lakers, you have a lot of talent to pull from. Let us know what your thoughts are. Is he the greatest Laker of all time? We want to know. Hashtag ODPH. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Vince, the Cowan Man, see toy local MMA fighter, telling you to keep on listening to the ODPH, the Citro 7's up-and-coming newest podcast.
Coming back for our third segment on this week's ODPH, and we got to talk a little UFC. We mentioned about the UFC on Fox card briefly last week, but the results definitely were a bit shocking, I guess, if you will. Robbie Lawler getting just dismantled by Rafael Dos Anjos in the main event. Um, it was clearly a 50-45 all around on the judges' scorecard. Dos Anjos looked just downright scary, and I at one point he nailed like a crazy combination that – Lawler just had no answer for. No, yeah, I believe the uh, combination in question was like 38 punches in a row or something absurd like that. It was crazy. I mean, Robbie just never got really out of the gate to go. And Dos Anjos, hey, I will tip my cap to him. He showed up. He is showing me something now at the heavier weight class. And it's going to be scary now. I believe he has a title shot coming against Woodley. That would which, make sense. Yeah, which I have no issue with. I mean, in Dos Anjos, I, I got to say, if he shows up like he did against Lawler, this is a no-brainer. He's going to win the belt. No question about this. And the only other fight on the card, I mean, they actually the main card had some great action on it. Glover Teixeira won in very quick fashion in his match. Um, Santiago Porzimbino, I, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I apologize. Uh, him against Mike Perry, that turned into a crazy fight in its own right with Santiago getting the win there. And dare I say, if you like knockouts, this was the one to watch. Josh Emmett gave the cleanest left hook I think I've ever seen in a fight to Ricardo Lamas and knocked him out cold. Ooh. If you have the chance to watch that on however you can watch fights, you need to see that hook. That hook was just downright scary, pinpoint accuracy, and it was lights out after that. So the whole card was pretty good, and I know they have a pay-per-view coming up in a couple weeks, but the big news coming out of the UFC MMA world is and I will admit, I am not excited if this does happen. Neither am I. Floyd Mayweather wants to come to the UFC. Good. JR, what is your thoughts on that? Instant rematch with Connor. <laughs> you know, he came to your world. You come to this one. That's your that's your inaugural fight right there. Why? Um, cha-ching. Uh, two, cha-ching. Uh, that's pretty much it. Why not? What else? Pad, do you have any thoughts on this? Why? Like, he's what? Why not? He's what, 50 years old? No, I, I don't think he's up there that old. But I will say this if I can jump in. Let me rehash something that happened a few years back. Randy Couture fought James Lights Out Tony in an MMA match. That fight was one of the most one-sided fights in history. Now, granted, you can say whatever you want about the age but this is what it breaks down to. This is what I mentioned when it was Connor versus Floyd. When you are stepping into a realm that you are not familiar with, you have one weapon at your disposal, and that is what your skills level set is. Floyd is arguably one of the greatest boxers, if not the greatest boxer of all time. You can argue that fact. But if he is coming in to a UFC MMA event, he does not know wrestling, he does not know jujitsu. This will be a very lopsided affair. It is much like when James Tony came in to fight Randy Couture. Couture took him down and just disposed of him first round, if I am not mistaken, and just ended it right then and there. There, if you're not trained to fight wrestling, you're not trained to fight with jujitsu. You're not trained on all the elements of MMA. You have a puncher's chance, and I'll give you that. If you can land a hook or you can land a shot, hey. You've got a chance to win. But is it enough for me to go, you know what, I'm excited to see this fight? Absolutely not. No, he doesn't he have a chance because, yes, he is one of the best boxers of all time. But that doesn't matter. And, yes, he can hit and he can punch and he can knock a guy out. That doesn't mean much if he's on the ground in a rear naked choke. Exactly. There is no point to it. I mean, unless the other fighter agrees to stay on his feet the entire time. But then why don't you just do a boxing match? I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not excited about this, and I, I fear that when this gets signed, this is all that's going to get shoved down people's throats is, oh, Floyd's coming to the UFC. Yeah, congratulations. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to get taken down by somebody that has a wrestling experience, and the fight's going to be over. Khabib. The end. Yeah, what weight class is he going to fight at, too? And if he fights somebody like Khabib, yeah, uh, it's going to be done very quickly, and you're going to blink and miss the fight. Catch weight McGregor. 
I mean, that's the only one you could do, but <laughs> but then McGregor's going to throw a head kick. He's not going to see coming. And hey, well, time out. Here we go. Why doesn't his first fight be CM Punk? <laughs> it's a good argument. You're welcome. It's a good argument, but I don't, I, I don't see how they they're going to do that. I mean, they have CM Punk in limbo right now. Yeah, which it'll be very. I, awkward. I think I think if he yeah. doesn't do Connor, maybe GSP. Maybe oh, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm throwing names out. <laughs> no, no, actually, no. Pad has a good point, and I'm going to say this: if this, if this is a big in capital F, yes. If GSP wants a big money fight, yeah, they'll make this fight, and GSP will win decisively. This is not even going to be worth entertaining a thought about. But it's going to be a big money fight. GSP is a very big name. Obviously, if he's given up the belt he just won, I don't think he's in it to fight for belts anymore. I mean, granted, I think it's more injury status or whatever is going on with him right now that is the reason he gave up the belt, but it doesn't sound like he's in any anxious return mode whatsoever. I don't, no. I don't think that fight would make as much money as you think. Because I like like to, to to your point and to Pat's point, who cares? Yeah. No one's begging for this like, oh man, we gotta see Floyd Mayweather go in there and fight GSP. No, nobody's begging, but no, I but you what? know but you know the hype train that will start rolling for it. Then that but that's what I'm saying. Like for me, as a fight fan, I have no interest to see in this. No, neither do I. And I think oh sorry. Ryan. No, I, I just can't get off for it. I think I think the only the only f- like okay, if they if he actually signs and is gonna come into the MMA, I think the only card you could put him on would be the return of Velasquez. No, you could you could definitely of Kane. Well, yeah, you could definitely put him on that one. I think that they would stack that card like you wouldn't believe. It. Oh, you'd have to. Well, that's what I'm saying. You could you could have Kane's return. Oh yeah, headline he, he, for sure, as we talked about on last week's show. Hopefully, and then, and it would then, be headlining, and then put him on somewhere like maybe co-main. I I don't. I, don't think I maybe would that not high. put Floyd main event. No, no, I think they would make Floyd main event. I think his. Oh yeah. I I just and like I say, I I don't. I'm not excited about it. No, I it, just fear that they would do it for the hype reasons. Yeah, no, they wouldn't do it for hype reasons if, and this is if, it ends up being Connor. I can understand why they would do it. You look at the money that made. You look at the everything that made. I, From a business standpoint, I would understand that reasoning. That being said, I would not give to you know what's about it. Because exactly. The only reason I would watch it is to watch Floyd lose and possibly get knocked out, and I would be on the floor laughing hysterically. He wouldn't get knocked out. He'd get submitted. He would get taken down and submitted. That is your fight in a nutshell. If some MMA fighter has any somewhat skill of wrestling, they would take him down immediately. They would not stand with him. No. Nobody would stand with him. I mean, unless there was like some weird gentleman's agreement that they would do it. I mean – I just I don't see it going any other way. No, neither do I. And that's just that's my opinion. Hit us up, hashtag ODPH. Let us know what you think. We're going to come back with a local minute. Stay tuned. Closing out this week's ODPH with a quick local minute, and there's a lot of action going on this weekend. Binghamton Bulldogs, 6-2, ranked 15th in the, their ABA league, uh, is coming home and facing Elmira in a big, big hometown rivalry game. More information on that is on BinghamtonBulldogs.com, so if you get the chance to go Saturday to the 23rd to Seton to go watch the game, hey, get down there and go see it. Pad, you got some Binghamton Devils news for us? Yeah, Binghamton Devils are on the road this weekend. Uh, Friday they are playing the uh, Wilkes Bear Scranton Penguins. Saturday, they are playing the Hershey Bears. As it stands, they are uh, unfortunately last place, uh, nine and fourteen. Hoping for a turnaround. You never know. Weirder things have happened. Also, a little bit of interesting news. It is the off season, but as some would say, there is no off season in baseball. Uh, came out in the news today uh, from WBNG that a uh, woman had recently died in. Uh, this past year in 2016 and uh in her will she requested that uh, over one hundred and ninety five thousand dollars be donated to nice egg stadium for uh improvements wow 
Yeah, so uh, over $195,000 is being donated to Nice Lake Stadium to improve the concession and dining area, concession stands, which they, uh, the mayor's office said has not been renovated since the stadium opened in 1992. That is incredible. That was from BNG, you said? Yes, uh, WBNG uh, po- posted it earlier today. That is amazing, and that is a true sports fan right there if you're yeah. leaving your will to the stadium to get fixed up. I mean, they have done such a nice job, and I know we've talked about this on previous shows. If you haven't got a chance to get down to a Rumble Ponies game, you need to make a, a definite, definite effort to get down there in 2018. They've done so much good work with the stadium, and now oh, this yeah. can only help it. Yeah, and they're even honoring uh, the woman who, who donated the money. It was a woman by the name of uh, Marion O'Connor who donated the money. And in O'Connor's honor, they are planning a, uh, quote, Big Brother slash Big Sister Day at the stadium next season. That is awesome news to hear. Folks, if you got the chance to go support some of the sports teams in town, the Binghamton Bulldogs, Binghamton Devils, Binghamton Rumble Ponies, go do it. You'll definitely be happy doing it. And we're going to close out this week's show with our locks and leaps, as we usually do going into the holiday season. And we want to wish everybody a happy holiday season from the ODPH panel. So, JR, why don't you kick it off for us this week? All right, guys, here we go. Uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody here and to everybody out there as well. Uh, I'm going to, as my lock, it's a little weird. So my lock this week is the Jimmy Garoppolo train, baby. There you the go. 49ers at home. Upsetting Jacksonville, kind of slowing their roll a little bit. I mean, are you, are you, are you sure you met lock? That's my lock. Okay, yeah. Oh, I, I don't stutter here, baby. That's a lock. That's that's what I'm going with. Pat, hit me with those stats. Jimmy Garoppolo as a starter is three and zero. He's five and zero. Five and zero. Three and zero this year, but five and zero total. That's true. I'm on yeah. the train. Yeah, I'm in. So, for no other reason than Merry Christmas, 49ers. You've got your franchise quarterback. He's leading the way. But they're starting to turn around. But they need to re-sign him before the offseason because I believe he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. Yup. Ah, whatever. He'll go back to New England. It doesn't matter. They don't <laughs> enjoy, enjoy it while you can. There you go. Uh, my leap, for no other reason other than I really need the number one seed. Um, Oakland, if you could please figure out how to put that team together and actually do something this weekend in Philadelphia, that'd be awesome. I'd appreciate it. Philly currently um, favored by eight and a half. Yep. So, like I said, uh, you know, they've got Nick Foles, so please resemble some sort of remembrance that was that team that's supposed to be my Super Bowl-bound AFC team. Please give me that as my Christmas gift. I would appreciate it. Thank you. That's going to be a fun game to watch. No, it's not because I have no faith in that leap. But other than just that's my gift that I want this year is them to knock off the Eagles so Minnesota takes over one, they cruise, then we can go to the Super Bowl at home. I just think that's going to be a shootout between Folds and uh, Derek Carr. I, that's just my opinion on it. Could be. So we'll see what happens. Pat, what do you got this week? Well, for my lock, Jar is going to like it. We have something of a, a bit of an, an anomaly in the NFL from uh, the past dozen years or so in NFL history. For the first time since 2000, the Minnesota Vikings are favored going into a game at Green Bay. That is some news. They are currently favored by nine. I am going with the Minnesota Vikings as my lock to just embarrass the you-know-what out of the Packers at home. The exciting thing is the spread of that game is nine, and the temperature is supposed to be three. Ooh, toasty. So that's, that's exciting. It's going to be another one of those awesome toasty. warm games that, in Wisconsin. That is North Division weather. Yeah, it is. That is going to be some fun to watch. That's some yeah, smash-mouth well, football up there, baby. Yep. It's going to be real fun to watch. And for my leap, biggest leap of the year I'm going to make, the Cleveland Browns beating the Chicago Bears. Oh! Merry Christmas, Cleveland Browns fans. If not now, when? Because I really think you got they're playing the Chicago Bears. Bears are going to be like, oh, it's the Browns, looking past them. And how many times do you hear a story like that team wins right before a holiday? You know, Merry Christmas, you know, so blank. Merry Christmas, Browns fans. It is possible. I'm not saying it's not, but if not now, when? Because... The Browns, I think, are making moves for next year. I know that yep. they, just, they just got a new GM who is really talking some talk and hopefully is going to turn that ship around for him because, I mean, if they go defeated, not undefeated, defeated this entire year, they got to do some massive rebuilding. Oh, yeah, because you look, you look at the game this week, like we said, playing the Bears at home. Following week, they're playing the Steelers. And the only way that that would be nothing is if – 
I mean, the Steelers will show up. I mean, this division oh, yeah. rival, they'll show up for that game. But I could see them taking off the gas pedal, so to speak, if they've already locked in their playoff spot. At the same time, though, I don't think they're going to take the foot off the gas pedal entirely because I don't think they want to lose to the Browns at home. No, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Yeah. But I think that they, I could see them maybe not going all out. No, Just, I agree with that. Especially because they really – I think everybody in Pittsburgh is going to be secretly wearing Bills jerseys because they really need New England to fall at some point, and they're loving the fact that Cleveland is their gate week seventeen for that reason. So they'll be they'll be AF they'll be AFC fans all weekend. Well, New, England week, New England week seventeen is play, is playing the Jets. Yeah, <sighs> which Shoot. you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, granted, I as a Bills fan, I'm hoping. I mean, I'm not taking it as a locker leap. I'm just as a oh, Bills you should fan, have faith. I should, but have faith. you know what? Take I, what I say the last time, I said New England would go crazy in the second half, and that's where they go. And the but the but the Bills did hang in there. They did. So it's not to say that they couldn't, but going to Foxborough is always a tough challenge. I'm not saying it's unwinnable, but I'm being a very realistic Bills fan. I'm hoping they win, but we'll see what happens. I think that they will cover the spread, though. I I don't think they're going to be by nine. Spreads twelve or twelve, whatever yep. the case is. I don't <laughs> think spreads twelve is going to not going to matter. I think it's going to be a little closer than that. All right, so for my lock, I am taking the aforementioned Steelers over Houston. Uh, I think they're going to definitely want to stay in that number one seed conversation. they got to win out and hope New England does get knocked off by the Bills or Jets in the upcoming week. So I'm going to take them. I think they're going to rebound very, very easily this week. Oh, yeah. And I guess for my leap, I I only say it's a leap because they're one of the most inconsistent teams in the league. I'm taking Kansas City over Miami. Ooh. Uh, The Chiefs, show me something if you're going to do something this year. Otherwise, just pack it in. I just want to see them beat Miami, and officially the Jay Cutler era will be over. And Kansas City favored by 10.5 at home. Which That's another thing. Kansas City at home is a whole different animal. Yep. And I just – I if you're going to do it, do it now. I'll say if memory serves, uh, them and Seattle go back and forth with the loudest stadium in the NFL. Yes, and I think that stadium is going to be rocking. I think they they definitely have some momentum beating the Chargers going into this one. Miami, you don't know what you're going to get this week. Nope. I mean, granted, it was awesome seeing Buffalo beat them last week. But Miami could rebound and get back on the winning ways. I just don't see it happening. I, th- I think Alex Smith, is if he wants to save his job for next year, he's got to put up a big game this week. But is the Jay Cutler era over? I'd, I'd th- say so. I think so. In my, so sure. in my humble opinion, I think it is. Yeah, I, I have, I'm with Ken on this one. I think it's over. I, don't, I think he really wanted nothing to do with this season, but yeah. Who, who would say no to a $10 million? There you go. We've had a debate Mer- about this before. <laughs> you know, As we said, this is the season, folks. Merry Christmas. $10 yes, million. Dollars. Absolutely. Hey, somebody is, he's making some bank. I can't feel that bad for him. But I don't feel bad for anything because it's the holiday season. And like we said previously, we hope you guys have a very happy holiday season. So on behalf of Coach Duffy, who couldn't make it this week, Frederick Theodore, who's working on his latest designs, which we hope to hear from him in 2018. From Padawan J, the intern himself, who is Star Wars. How many times have you seen it by now? Uh, Two, looking like four by the end of the uh, year. For the sound guy galore, JR, who will be rocking the Skull Nation like no everybody's business. Ah, You know I will be. And yours truly, kind of. Thank you for listening to the ODPH. We'll see you next time. Hey.